you would consider yourself a preacher of righteousness, right? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Just, just like Jesus and all the apostles. Absolutely. Well, Keith, don't you know that we're no longer under the law anymore? If, if you're preaching obedience to Jesus for salvation's sake, don't you understand that, that you've been severed from Christ? Don't you understand that, you, that you've fallen from grace and that, and that Christ has become no effect to you? That's what you're, you would be accused of, but you have to take the totality of Scripture and you also have to understand what law the Apostle Paul and all the apostles are addressing and what works they're addressing. Because the Apostle Paul and the apostles themselves were not preaching a different gospel than Jesus Christ. And, yeah. that, and that's, where, that's, that's, that's the problem today. Exactly. And that's what we're going to get into today. We're going to be discussing the so-called Galatian error, where, where people will say that if you're preaching obedience, if you're preaching that you must live holy, uh -huh. you must obey Jesus for salvation's sake, then they'll go oftentimes to the book of Galatians and say, listen, you, you've fallen from grace. You've been severed from Christ. And you've, you've heard all these arguments before. There's, there's, so, many, there, there's so many phrases that they, they just typically parrot. Uh, they'll say, you know, they'll call you a foolish Galatian. They'll say, who, who has bewitched you? If, if you're preaching, you have to obey for salvation's sake, then, then who has bewitched you? You've fallen into the Galatians error. And, uh, and they'll say, you know, you're a legalist and they'll say that you're a works-based salvationist and you're trying to earn your salvation. I mean, you hear this stuff all the time out on the streets and probably more. Oh, absolutely. Um, people will, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm sh we're surely not saying all of them do this, but it seems like many of them do. They'll maliciously attack you, falsely accuse you, um, accuse you of things you didn't actually say. They'll twist your words. And um, unfortunately, they're, they're just, some of them may truly be deceived. Some of them may just be sticking up for their false gospel. Um, but you have to understand what the Apostle Paul is addressing in Galatia. So, Keith, I just wanted to start off with a little icebreaker here. Uh, so I'm yeah. going to tell a little joke, okay? I, I normally don't do this sort of thing, but I'm going to start <laughs> off with a little joke, okay? All right. So what is a holiness preacher's favorite kind of pizza? Mm, I'm not sure. The works. <laughs> oh no, you you already opened up a can of worms, man. <laughs> you, you know what? Maybe maybe that was a little bit cheesy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, you know, I, I may even edit that out because you know I could see somebody coming across and doing a video like, "Oh, he's making light of salvation. He's going to hell. And this and that." <laughs> Today we have with us Keith from Y City Preachers. Uh, he has a lot of teaching videos over on his channel, very informative, well exegeted. He leaves no stone unturned. Uh, he also has a lot of videos of street preaching, and he also does live fellowship. I believe, I believe it's every week, isn't it? Normally, when you can get to it? Yeah, I usually try to do it once a week on Saturdays. Typically, this obviously today we're not having one, so. Yeah. Well, uh, it's an honor to have you. Welcome. Hey, thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here, brother. Um, just to kind of open up about myself, just very briefly, um, I came to the Lord about 16 years ago. Um, didn't know anything about Jesus. I, I didn't grow up in the church, did not grow up in a Christian household. And uh, the Lord just spoke to me out of the blue. Six, about 16, 17 years ago, told me, pick up the Bible, come follow me. Of course, I thought I was going crazy. Um, and so I just did what he said. I picked up the New Testament, started reading it. And before long, I repented in my own home, gave my life completely to the Lord that day, completely died to myself and was miraculously filled in the Holy Spirit. And I continued in the faith for about seven years. And during that seven years, I, I basically came to discover that, I mean, you know how it is when you first convert it. It's like, oh, they're talking about Jesus. Turn up the radio. They're, they're talking about Jesus. Turn up the TV. And I, I, I quickly discovered that what's being preached by the majority is not the truth. I'm not saying there's no truth, but it's also a lot of deception. And um, that led me to go back into church history, which I came upon the early church fathers. And it just helped to show that what I am seeing is what they saw. The same exact thing. 
Because if you just read the New Testament with a blank slate, and trust me, that's that's easier said than done. Uh, just read it for what it says without reading your presuppositions into it. You will come to the same conclusion that the early church fathers did. Amen. Exactly. I don't know if you've heard this before, but I just wanted to read a quote from Martin Luther because Martin Luther considered the book of Galatians his baby. I mean, this was his boo. Yep. And I mean, literally, as you'll see, he, he considered <clears throat> himself married to this epistle. Okay. Yep. Let me just read this quote. He says, the epistle to the Galatians is my epistle. To it I am, as it were, in wedlock. It is my Catherine. Now, Catherine was his wife. So he's, he's essentially saying that he considers himself married to the book of Galatians. This is like his wife. So yep. this, this was like one of his favorite books. This was his go-to. Uh, I, I know Romans and John he was very fond of as well. But he used the book of Galatians. And we find that most Christians today will use the book of Galatians. If you try to preach obedience and holiness, you have to obey Jesus. They'll go to guess what? The book of Galatians and, and call you all these things we just talked about. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're just going to go through selected verses. We're, we're going to go through the book of Galatians. For time's sake, we're not going to go through every single verse in Galatians, but you can do this on your own time. It doesn't take very long to read, but we're just going to go through this. And once you see what Paul was saying here, just like you were saying that, that he was addressing the works of the law. Okay. He wasn't saying right. the whole argument here was not Hey guys, don't you understand that you don't have to obey Jesus? Right. Okay, that that was not his whole argument. You have to look and see who he was addressing and what exactly he was saying. Because over and over and over again, we'll see he says that he's addressing the works of the law, specifically circumcision, as we're going to see. He mentions that numerous times. And once you see that Paul was addressing a very specific topic, these Galatians were going back to the Old Testament law, going back to the Old Covenant. Once you see that, You'll say, wow, how, how could I have missed this? And, and, and you'll see that you've been using this epistle to, to say actually the opposite of what it's saying. Because a lot of people use this to say uh, that basically you don't have to obey Jesus. When Paul was actually saying the exact opposite, as we'll see, especially as we get into uh, chapters 5 and 6, that Paul was saying, no, you absolutely do have to obey Jesus. Uh, right. But the thing that he was addressing for the first few chapters, you, as we'll see over and over again, was the Old Testament Mosaic law saying, hey right. guys, don't go back to the Mosaic law. No, stick with Jesus, walk by the spirit, which means, you know, walking with Jesus in obedience to him, as we're gonna see. That's um, right. So we're, we're just gonna go through and read some selected uh, verses that specifically talk, uh, mm -hmm. g give the context of what Paul was talking about. Right, and real quick, I, I, I wanna add, what you have to understand when you're reading all of these epistles by Paul, chronologically speaking, Acts happened before Romans, Ephesians, Colossians, Galatians, chronologically speaking. I'm not speaking about the time frame in which they were written. I'm speaking chronologically in the, in the, in the space of time. Acts chapter 15, you need to fully grasp. Okay, mm -hmm. Acts chapter 15, you see this controversy starting. The Gentiles are now starting to flood the church. And in Acts chapter 15, verse 1, the Pharisees who believed in Jesus, believed in their Messiah, said it is necessary to command them to be circumcised, to be saved. And you see them say the same thing, repeating it in Acts chapter 15, verse 5, that they commanded that it was necessary for them to keep the Mosaic law and be circumcised in the foreskin of their flesh to be saved. This was a huge controversy in the church, and this was declared in Jerusalem under inspiration of the Holy Spirit with James presiding that we are under no obligation to the entire law of Moses or the work of circumcision. Not that we're not under any law whatsoever, because what law was before Acts chapter 15? The moral law of God. He destroyed the whole world in the flood. Why? Because the thoughts and intents of their heart was only evil continuously. How can he charge them with that when there is no law? Well, Romans chapter 2 says that we have the law of God written upon our heart and our conscience bears witness, either accusing or excusing us whether we do right or wrong. So you have to understand what the controversy was in the early church and what Paul is addressing in Romans 3 and Romans 4 and Galatians and Ephesians chapter 2 that people love to twist to their own destruction. Yeah. 
Yeah, th this was this was all throughout the epistles. This was constantly the thing that Paul was running up against was, you know, the Judaizers and those trying to preach circumcision, trying to bring people back under the law. We see this constantly. The the argument back then was was not, hey, do we need to obey Jesus? That that, that was not. not the controversy. The controversy was never like, hey, do we really need to do what Jesus says or or can we right. not do what Jesus says? Like that that was never it in Galatians especially that was never the context. And in fact, James addresses this this whole right. idea because I guess some started getting this idea and he says, "No, no, no, wait, wait. No, no. We absolutely have to obey. A man is justified right. by works and not by faith alone." So and, uh, if we just see that all throughout the epistles, this right. is what Paul was addressing. And, and we know that because Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20, right before he ascends to heaven, he tells his own apostles, go into all the world, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all things I commanded you. And that's why you see Jesus in John chapter uh, 14, verse 21 says, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will come to him and manifest myself to him. Yeah. Paul is not contradicting Jesus. Yeah. Paul was never saying you don't have to obey Jesus. It was this whole controversy off of Judaizers pressing it upon the Gentiles that, hey, Salvation is of the Jews. You must be grafted into Israel, which is correct. Mm -hmm. We are grafted in. Well, then you have to keep the law of Moses and you have to be circumcised in your flesh. And exactly. that is the law that Paul is addressing. So let's read Galatians now when you're ready, brother, and take off our 21st century glasses and mm -hmm. put on our first century glasses and read it through the eyes of those in the first century. Yeah. And you'll understand what he said. Exactly. And, and I guess they believe that Jesus was saying, uh, teach them to observe all that I've commanded for rewards or something like that, right? Right, right. Okay, yeah, exactly. You're exactly right. Just take off your lenses for a minute. Just don't add anything more than what is here and don't take away anything from this, okay? Just right. like when I first came across this and when I was coming out of this whole deception, that's what I had to do. I had to just read this and say, okay, what exactly is it saying? not to add to it, not to take away, just read it for exactly what it's saying. Don't, don't read your doctrine into it that you've been told because so many pastors out there have just hammered it into you that, hey, if, if you're trying to obey for salvation's sake, then you're falling into the Galatians error. Yeah, you're, you're doing the same thing as the Galatians. So when you read this, you're thinking that, but just take all that off and just approach it as, as you would. This is the very first time reading it. Very first right. time, okay? Amen. So uh, we're gonna start at uh, Galatians 2, 11 through 21. This is, where, uh, this is where the whole controversy really begins. This is where the whole debate begins. So I'm just gonna read a little bit of it. But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came, or before certain men came from James, he was eating with the Gentiles. But when they came, he drew back and separated himself, fearing the circumcision party. So right, right here, we see right who he was fearing, okay? The circumcision party. They were trying to preach that you had to be circumcised in order to be saved. They were not preaching that you had to obey Jesus to be saved. That was never the, the argument. It, it, was, it was, do you have to obey the Mosaic that was never even, That was never even brought up. So. Exactly. And the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him, so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that their conduct was not in step with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, if you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you force the Gentiles to live like Jews? So we see right there, he was he is talking about forcing the Gentiles to live like Jews, live under the Mosaic law. Right. And we're going to see this constantly. Like, for example, he goes on, we ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law. See, right. right right off the bat, when he starts talking about works, right off the bat, what is he talking about? He's talking about, he specifies what type of works. Right. He's not talking about the, the works of obedience like James 2 is talking about. He says exactly what works he's talking about. He, he makes this very, very plain. And right. like I said, once you see this, it's going to be like the scales are just going to come off and you're going to say, wow, I, I can't believe I didn't see this. He, he right. says a, man, uh, a person is not justified by works of the law. Now, Keith, 
Do you agree with that? Do you agree that a man is not justified by works of the law? Absolutely. In fact, I made that on a video of mine where I, I literally contrasted. I used only in the sense of an informal junction that somebody actually took my words and twisted and tried to make a slander video of me where I said I was contrasting law apart from faith. And I said, it's only by faith, but I was using only as an informal junction, not saying faith alone. So the person that did that had malicious intent because they cut out four minutes of my video where I explained that you have to turn from your sin. You must repent and you must continue to follow Jesus Christ obediently to the end. And then I go on and explain this in Romans three, because he's making the same argument in Romans three. You're justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. And I said, yeah. absolutely. I agree with that. It's only by faith. <gasps> uh oh, Keith only believes in faith alone. No, it was contrasting. In fact, you brought this up the other day, uh, brother Adam, you said, you know, somebody says, if you Adam went to take me out to eat and you said, Hey man, you want to go out to eat at Burger King? And I said, Oh no, man, I only eat McDonald's. Am I really saying I only eat McDonald's 24, seven, 365 days a year. It's not what I'm saying. And yeah. then you catch me next week eating at Arby's. Oh, but you said you only eat at McDonald's. You knew what I was saying. Exactly. I was making a contrast. I was contrasting between the two. I was not saying faith alone. So the person that did that knew what they were doing. It was wicked. Well, yeah. And, and just like he, he goes on to say, Paul goes on to say that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, notice he doesn't say, but through faith alone in Jesus Christ, because why? Because yeah, right. exactly. And, you know, we know by James two, that faith is not complete. It's not whole. It's not made complete until action is attached to it. Right. You can have faith, but in, until an action is, uh, is attached to it, until you actually act on that faith, James says that it's not complete. So this is, this is what he's talking about. A person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith, that where you not only believe, but you you actually act on your faith in Jesus Christ. That I mean, he doesn't say faith alone. This is this is the whole argument. So, uh, and then he he goes on to say, so we also have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by here it is again, works of the law. Notice how he doesn't say, hey, we're justified by faith in Christ and not by obedience to Jesus. No, okay, that, that's Th not this even is in, silly. that's not even in the discussion. Yeah. And he says, because by works of the law, see, this is the third time, just right out of the gate. He's saying, he says this over and over again, because by works of the law, no one will be justified. So he hammers this in time and time again, saying, listen, it's through Jesus. Now it's not through Moses. It's not through the right. old covenant. So, uh, do you, do you want to, do you want to take over and read a little bit? Yeah. Did you want to pick up in verse 17? Uh, I think that that's it, but if okay. our, in our endeavor to be yeah. justified, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'll quote from the new King James version, um, sure. but you know, the, the one thing I want to point out to is the translators today did a huge injustice in my opinion. Okay. The, the original, I'm not a King James onlyist. I prefer the Texas receptus for the new Testament myself over the critical text, but, um, you know, the original 1611 King James Bible took the word law when they were specifically addressing the Mosaic law and capitalized it. Mm. And in the English language, that's important because that tells you it's not a general law. It's the law. Yeah. And you and see that in the 1611. I've got it upstairs. Um, but for some reason, when they did the revision, they lowercased it. But, you know, he goes on right after making this contrast against the Mosaic law and the work of circumcision, that it's faith in Jesus. He goes on, he says, but if while we seek to be justified in Christ, we ourselves also are found to be sinners. Is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again, those things that I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor, a transgressor against what? I thought there was no law. He says mm. he makes himself a transgressor again. And then he goes on and says, for I, through the law, died to the law that I might live to God. Yeah. I mean, Paul even <laughs> said that he was under the law. He, right. he said it in, in at least a couple of different places. So not, not the Mosaic law, but the law of the spirit, the law of Christ, the law of faith. Right. And he, and he goes on and says, I have been crucified with Christ. 
so that it is no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Yeah. He's making a contrast once again against this whole notion of the Mosaic law. And he's saying, Christ lives in me. I died to this law. There's no power in the law. There's power in grace. Oh, well, people, well, that's, that's what I believe in. I believe in grace. Do you? Well, Titus chapter 2, verse 11 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. That's right now. That's the grace of God. Mm -hmm. So if you're sinning every day, how do you have the grace of God? The grace of God teaches you to deny ungodliness, worldly lust, to live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age right now. That's the grace of God. There's yeah. no power in the law. That's what Paul's saying. You're going back. You Galatians want to go back to this law when there's no power. There's power in grace. Yeah. And and just like you said, there, there's a difference between different types of works. The Bible makes this more than apparent. It talks about several different types of works. Okay. There's, there's dead works. There's good works. There's evil works. There's works of the law. Uh, there's, there's works of faith. There's all these different types of works. I did a video on that. I'm going to try to post that down below, but, but check that out. The Bible, mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's, cause pe some people will say, well, oh, so all works are the same. No, they're not because the Bible specifically lays out several different types of works see people think that christ just died because well we're just poor helpless sinners no you've sinned against god and an atonement needed to be provided but he also died that you might receive the power of god living in you to actually live holy to walk just as christ walked and that's what first first john 4 17 says that love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Why? Because as he is, so are we also in this world. You're just like Jesus right now in this world. Mm. That's why he died. He died, yeah. First John chapter 3, to destroy the works of the devil. So, yeah, and, and that, exactly. And, and exactly. In, in what sense would this make? See, at the very end there, he says, for if righteousness were through the law... Then Christ right. died for no purpose. Now imagine how, how most people try to make this. They try to make this about any works and about obeying Jesus. So so let's just try to, when you go through here, try to plug this in and see if this makes sense. So right. is this really saying for if righteousness were through obeying Christ, then Christ died for no purpose? That's absolutely And, and, and I think a lot saying. of people would say, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. He, he, he obeyed so that we don't have to, right? Right. And, and that's, that's, it's heresy. That's not correct. That would defy the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus yeah. constantly preached obedience. John chapter 5, verse 28 through 29. Jesus said, Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life. Those who have done evil to the resurrection yeah. of condemnation. Paul, Paul didn't preach a separate gospel than Jesus. No. We're going to see. He goes on in, in chapters 5 and 6. He's preaching the same exact thing same as gospel. Jesus, as we'll see. Um, but, uh, so now Galatians 3, this is, I say, uh, I, I would say this is one of the main chapters that people use against uh, people who preach righteousness. Okay, right. Uh, they'll say, they'll, they'll quote from this, Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by, here's that phrase again, by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? So what, what would you say to this, Keith? Because a lot of people will try to say, well, see, they're, they're, they're polar opposites. The works here and faith, they're, they're completely opposite. And Paul is juxtaposing these against each other. But, uh, but what, what's it actually saying here? It's saying the same thing we've been arguing about. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law? Did you receive the Holy Spirit of God by keeping the law of Moses and getting circumcised? Those works. That's the works that he is addressing. As we've seen the whole way through so far. Yeah. Right. And he says, or by the hearing of faith. Now, we know in the Greek, faith means faithful. 
Now think about this. If you're going to make this argument that, well, Keith, did you receive the spirit by the works of the law? See, Keith, you're, you, you believe in the works of the law. No, I don't. I believe what Jesus said. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 21, what did I say earlier? He who has my commandments and keeps them. It is he who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my father and I will come to him and manifest myself to him. So how does Jesus manifest himself to you? By obeying him. What's the first step of your obedience? Works of the law, the Mosaic law and circumcision? No. Yeah. The first step of your obedience is to do what? Luke chapter 13, verse 3. Jesus said, repent or you're all likewise going to perish. You must repent. And we know today that people like to say, well, especially the faith only crowd, uh, alone crowd likes to say, well, repentance just means a change of mind. So you have to change your mind from unbelief to belief in Jesus Christ. Well, that's interesting. That's a part of it. But we know that it's turning from all sin. Well, how do we know that? Matthew chapter 12, verse 41. Jesus said that the men of Nineveh are going to rise up in the judgment and condemn this generation because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And indeed, a greater than Jonah is here. Amen. So here's Jesus defining repentance, the repentance that he wants. So go to Jonah chapter 3, verse 10 in your Old Testament. And it clearly says that the men, the people there of Nineveh, turned from their evil ways, gave up the violence in their hands. God saw their works and changed his mind not to destroy that city. So here's Jesus in Matthew chapter 12, verse 41, giving the definition of repentance that he wants you to do, that you must yeah. turn from your sin and turn in faith to him. You must actually obey him. And so right here, if you're going to interpret that, that, Oh, but by the works of law, we don't have to do any works. It's just by this nonchalant faith in Jesus Christ, a mental agreement doctrinally that Jesus died from your sins or for your sins. Um, that's not what he's addressing. It's the entire context of the Mosaic law and the work of circumcision. Yeah. And he says this phrase, hearing with faith. Well, Paul goes on to talk more about this. I think if we just read the context here, we can kind of right. see what he's talking about. He goes on to say, okay, he says, uh, so did you receive the, the spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? He goes on to say, are you so foolish having begun by the spirit? Are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain? If it de in, indeed what it was in vain, does he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? And he goes on to say what this is just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. Now, did Abraham uh, just just have faith alone? What, what, is that what, is that what Paul's saying here? Hey, Abraham just had faith alone. Okay, so so this is what he's talking about. Is that is that really the argument that he's making here? And can you prove otherwise? Oh, absolutely. See, people love to take this the faith alone crowd or faith only crowd. They like to take this and say, well, see, he's quoting from Genesis chapter fifteen, verse six that he believed in God and God accounted to him for righteousness. See, that's all I got to do. I just got to believe in God. Okay, well, the question is, did Abraham have works before Genesis chapter 15, verse 6? I'll give everybody a second. If you said no, you're deceived. Genesis chapter 12, you may want to look at it. Because God first speaks to Abraham and says, basically, I'm paraphrasing, hey, I want you to get out of your house. Get out of your father's house, get out of your country, go to a land that I'm going to show you. And in verse four, you see that he packed up his stuff and he obeyed. He didn't sit back and just say, okay, I believe in you. Abram, I told you to leave. Yeah, God, I, I believe in you. I have faith. I heard from you. Hey, Abram, it's been two days. Are you going to leave yet? Don't you understand? I'm not saved by works. I have faith in you, God. No, he obeyed God. Then you go forward, even with Melchizedek, which I believe was a, the pre-incarnate uh, Christ, personally. And we see that he gave Melchizedek tithe of all. Is that a work? Then you get into Genesis chapter 15, after he's already been obeying God, that God saw his heart. He's been showing his faith by obeying God. And God accounted to him for righteousness. And James makes this correlation in James chapter two. Yeah, and, and, and I just want people to understand, I, I just really want to hammer this home. So you're saying that that when this when this is quoted, 
when when Paul quotes, just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness, he was actually doing works of obedience to God before this. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, so mean, he, he was not saying that this was the moment of, of, of justification, of, of first justification in the sense of, hey, this is just faith alone. Right. I mean, he was already obeying God. Faith means yeah. being faithful. Look, people, don't twist our words. You're doing this by faith. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Our works are by faith. But works and obedience go hand in hand. You can't separate. And, and as Paul goes on to say, as we're going to read here in a minute towards the end of this, that faith works through love. That's right. That's okay. Right. That, that's right. exactly what we're talking about. So Paul goes on to clarify, if you just read this in context and, and again, don't add anything more to what he's saying and just, and, and don't take anything away from it. But uh, if you can go ahead and, uh, and, and keep reading there, uh, know then that it is those of faith who are the sons yeah, of Abraham. Yeah. yeah. Verse seven here. Therefore know that only those who are of Faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel to Abraham before saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Now, I want to interject something real quick here. If you're still not grasping this, what do you do with Jesus in John chapter 8, verse 39, when he turns to the Jews and he says, if Abraham, if Abraham was your father, if you were the children of Abraham, you would have the faith of Abraham. Is that what Jesus said? Hmm. You would only have faith alone. You would have faith only. You wouldn't have any works. No, Jesus said in John chapter eight, verse 39 to the Jews, he said, if you were of your child, if you were the children of Abraham, you would do the works of Abraham. It's the same thing that Amen. Paul's arguing here. Yeah. Amen. Uh, just, just keep reading there if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. See that book of the law, Mosaic law. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah. hold, hold on, sorry, just yeah, let me interrupt. Ahead. Do so far, do we do we have we even gotten a slight hint that Paul was saying that hey, you don't have to obey Jesus? Have, have we gotten that one bit, or has he consistently said over and over and over and over again, circumcision and works of the law? It's the same argument the entire time so far. The so same far, argument. yeah. I, I just and, wanted and, to point that out. And what we have to understand is take out the numbers take out the chapters, take out all the headers, read it as a letter, because that's exactly what it is. In fact, you know what? I suggest, especially to those that are new in the faith, even you that are mature in the faith and you're not seeing this, go buy yourself a reader's Bible. They take out the headers, they take out the numbers, they take mm. out the chapters. You can actually read it like a letter and you'll clearly see what he's arguing. Yeah. You want right. me to continue? Yeah, keep on going there if you don't mind. Uh, verse 11, but that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident for the just shall live by faith. Amen. I agree with that. Shall live by faith, walk by faith. Right. Yes. It's a walking by faith. In fact, the apostle Paul makes that argument in Romans, in Romans chapter four. He, I think it's Romans chapter four. He wraps it up. In fact, I want to go there just really quick. Um, I don't really have that one memorized, but he, he sits there and says that we walk in the steps of our father, Abraham. Um, uh, where is that at? Um, let's see, I'm trying to find it. We can face. No, I can't. I, Oh, right here. Okay. Uh, it's verse 12, uh, Romans chapter four, verse 12. And the father of circumcision to those who are not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of faith, which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. W walking, walking implies doing something, right? Exactly like, right. I, I just want to clear that up. Walking implies you're actually doing that. something. Amen. That's why I wanted to read that. It's the same. He, see, he's not arguing against walking in the steps of faith. Oh, obedience, those works are acceptable to yeah. God because you're doing it in faith and obeying Jesus. Christ. Yeah. And, and it's about walking in the spirit, not walking in the commands of the Mosaic law. As he's going to go right. on to say, he's talking, he, he, he goes on to say, 
we need to walk by the spirit, we're walk in the spirit. That. And we're going to see what that means here as well. So, right. Um, so we let, we left off there. The yeah. just shall live by faith. Verse 12. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. So if you put yourself back under the Mosaic law, you are obligated to keep all of it. Every single jot and tittle. Verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us, for it is written, curses everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith, not the works of the Mosaic law. Yeah, again, he's still talking about uh, the curse of the law, the Mosaic law. He hasn't changed. He hasn't all of a sudden changed and said, hey, you don't have to obey Jesus. OK, we're still on the same line of thought. So just let's just continue right. that. Uh, then he goes on and, and says, you know, to give a human example, he goes on and guess what he does? He contrasts the the old covenant with the new. And he's talking about how we're under the new covenant now, not the old covenant. See, again, this is the this is the whole context. This is what he hammers in over and over and over again, not obeying God versus not obeying God. That That's this right. is not even the is not even the context. And uh, then he goes on and says, is the law we're still talking about the law is the law then contrary to the promises of god certainly not for if a law had been given that could give life then righteousness would indeed be by the guess what the law right but the scripture imprisoned everything under sin so that the promise by faith in jesus christ might be given to those who believe yep. uh, then it says now before faith came we were held captive under the law. We, we used to be under the law, but through Christ, right. uh, the veil the veil's lifted and we come into Christ. Right. Imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came in order that we right. might be justified by faith. Notice how it doesn't say that we might be justified by faith alone. Right. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian for in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Uh, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Again, we just went over how Abraham uh, obeyed; he walked with God in the foot, and we need to walk in the footsteps of faith as well. Is there anything you'd like to add to that before we go on to uh, chapter four? No, I mean, it, it's it's the same thing. They, they, you know, he's specifically addressing the Jews there because you had you did have some Jews in Galatia. They were kept under this law until faith was revealed. And that faith would be in Jesus Christ. So he, he's just he's making the same argument the entire time. He's never once dealt with obedience to Jesus Christ. Not one yeah. time. Not yep. one time. Exactly. Um. All right, if you, if you don't mind, uh, go ahead and start us off on Galatians 4. Uh, how far you went uh, down? Reading? We'll do uh, one, through, 1 through 11. Okay. It says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all. So he's making this, he's making this argument that they were the child, but they're not differing from the slave. Now, who's the slave? Well, we know Jesus in John chapter 8, verse 30, 34 says that whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. So he's making this distinction between the, the, the child, the one that was kept under the law, the Jews, from the slave, the rest of us, you know, without the law. Though he is master of all, you're going to see that there. In verse 2, he says, But it is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. So he may, he's, he's showing it, it. It doesn't matter if you, if you were the child, the Jew that was under law. You're not better than the Gentile. You're still a slave because you've committed sin. Even so, we, when we were children, were under bondage under the elements of the world. Verse four, but when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law. So who was under the law? The Jews, the Gentiles were never under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. So you can see, see, he's making two arguments here, but, but lumping them all together, just like he did in Romans chapter three, 
when he says, are we better than they? Talking about us Jews. Are we Jews better than they? No, because all have sinned. Okay, we're not better than them. But then he also goes on after kind of quote unquote beating up the Jews a little bit that you're not special. You're still sinners. But at the same time, he's saying, you know, we are blessed because we received the oracles of God. We had more light than the Gentiles did. Um, so you got, you got to really understand this and study this out. But anyways, you can see, he says, to, to redeem those who are under the law, the Jews, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So just because you're a Jew does not mean you're automatically saved. And Jesus said the same thing, that he can raise up you know, children of his own. You know, John the Baptist preached that. And Jesus sat there and said, many are going to come from the east and west and sit down, and you're going to see yourselves thrusted out. Hmm. Um, now, verse six, he says, and because you are sons, God sent forth the, the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And remember, what did Jesus say? Who's the slave? The one who commits sin. John chapter eight, verse 34. Therefore, you are no longer a slave. You're not a sinner. You're a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Verse eight. But then, indeed, when you did not know God. Now, see here, I believe he's speaking of the Gentiles. But then, indeed, when you did not know God, you serve those which by nature are not gods. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire to be in bondage? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you least I have labored for you in vain. Yes. I mean, there you go. The yeah. same argument. What, what, where do we ever see in God's word at all about keeping certain days, certain, certain months, certain seasons and years? The Mosaic law. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to ask. So what, so what is this uh, weak and worthless elementary principles of the world? Whose slaves you want to be once more? What's he talking about? Well, he goes on mm -hmm. to say, you observe days and months and seasons and years. So right. again, he's, he's going back over and over and over. He's just beating it into their heads. Don't go right. back to the Mosaic law. Again, again, I have to do this. So far, have we come across anything where Paul is saying that, hey, you don't have to obey the commands of Jesus? Have we, have we seen that even hinted at so far? Or is he saying, again, hey, you observe days and months and seasons and years, and you're, you're worried about getting circumcised and going back under the law? That's all it's been about. The entire yeah, time. So far. So so now when we get into Galatians 5, okay? So Paul's just built this whole argument. Again, don't go back to the Old Testament Mosaic law. And he says, for freedom, Christ has set us free. What? To, to not have to obey him? No, he, he doesn't say that. Listen. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Well, what's the yoke of slavery? Well, he, he just got done talking about this. Right. He says, do not submit again. You've been freed. You've been freed from the law and you've been freed from sin. And now you've been brought into Christ. And now he's your Lord. He's your master. You have we, we no longer have a, yeah, we, we no longer have a, uh, ha have a tutor. We have the spirit who lives in us and teaches us and guides us and equips us and shows us which way to go. This is the new covenant. This is the argument that he's been making and that he's going to continue to make that, hey, we're under the new covenant now. We don't have to go by these, these, these principles of the world. We don't have to go by obeying uh, days and months and seasons of years, observing certain uh, days and months and all that and right. uh, observing circumcision. But now we have the spirit. So don't go back and submit again to the Old Testament law. Don't go back to sin. Uh, and then he says, look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision okay now is paul saying look hey guys i say to you that if you try to obey jesus for salvation's sake <laughs> no okay th this is silly just, right. just plug this right. argument that you hear just preached over and over again plug this right. argument as you read through galatians and see if this makes any sense to you paul's not saying hey look i say the i say to you that if you accept obeying jesus jesus for a requirement of salvation then you're going to go to hell no, he, he literally tells us exactly what he's talking about. He says, look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision. Right. We, do, Keith, do you preach? Let me just ask you, do you preach circumcision? Absolutely not. Okay, because I've never <laughs> preached circumcision. So, right. so Paul's preach, talking about circumcision, right? I don't preach right? Mosaic law either. So. Yeah, and, and yeah, just right. to be clear, Paul is saying, Paul's talking about circumcision here, right? 
Yep. Amen. Okay. Exactly. So let's just stick with this. Um, so far, he hasn't mentioned anything about obedience to Christ. Uh, okay. I said, if you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. He's not saying that if you try to obey Christ, he's not going to be any of any advantage to you. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision. Here he mentions it yet again, that he is obligated to keep the whole law. What law? What law? Well, the whole law, law we've law? been reading about, the, the right. Old Testament law. This is what the law of circumcision. Now, given that in verse four, who meets the qualification? Go ahead and read that. Yeah. Who meets this qualification? Now he says, you are severed from Christ. Who is severed from Christ? Th those who preach obedience to Jesus? Is, 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 this any, is this anything in, in Paul's mind of what he's thinking right now and what he's writing? The, hey, hey, you, you who think that you can obey Jesus, let, let, let me just tell you something. You that think that you need to obey Jesus, you're severed from Christ. Is that what Paul is saying? It's absolutely not what he's saying. No, he's saying if you accept circumcision, he says it twice. He says circumcision and then mentions the law two more times right before this. He says it's these people who have fallen away from grace. Right. These, these people trying to go back to circumcision and the law. And he says that you have fallen away from grace for, for through the spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision. See, when he keeps saying for, he's continuing this thought. Right. right. He's saying for. So knowing this, that we're not under the law of circumcision. For in Christ Jesus we've been freed from the law and we've been placed in Christ Jesus for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. So he's saying the Mosaic law doesn't count for anything, but right. only faith working through love. Do you see that faith? Now, now the only thing that matters is, is faith that works, working through love. This is, this is obedience to Jesus commands. This is faith that actually, yes, does works. As James right. 2, this is the and same thing that James 2 is talking about. That, that the faith, faith is not completed until it works through love. And what's love? Well, Jesus brought the epitome of love in his commands. All of his commands are love, right? That, that, that's the embodiment of love. And, and he says that, hey, this is all that matters now. He's talking about this James 2 faith that, hey, faith that's not completed until you have an action attached to it. This is what matters. Walking by the Spirit, as we're going to see in Galatians 5. Right. Um, wanted to read something here. So, you know, the whole context in verse 4, you become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. Oh, that's what you preach, Keith. That's what you preach, Adam. No, I don't try to or attempt to be justified by the law. And you don't preach that either. Now, that Greek word is dikaieo which means declared righteous. I don't try to become de declaring myself or think I can be declared righteous by God by keeping the Mosaic law. That's the context, that law, not obedience to Jesus Christ. And think about this. In, in Matthew chapter 12, verses 34 through 37, Jesus said this, Brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. But I say to you, listen to this, but I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, dikaieo, the same Greek word. For by your words you will be justified, by your words you will be condemned. Your words can actually justify you. But is that justification under the Mosaic law? Or is that good fruit, fruit yeah. of faith, works of faith, good things are coming out of your mouth. Just like James talks about, you know, uh, bitterness and, and sweet water can't come out of the same mouth. All right. Yeah. He's, Jesus is speaking the same thing. It's the same Greek word, dikaieo. And Jesus literally says, for your words, you can be justified by your words. You'll be condemned. You better watch your mouth. And, and, and even and, Romans 10, 10, 9, we have to confess with our mouths, right? Right. That, that's right. something that we have to do. So it, it, he's never, ever, ever, so far anyways, but we're going to see it. He's going to switch the topic. He's never once dealt with obedience to Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, so this is where he's going to change it, right? Circumcision. Right. This is where he's going to, this is where he's going to change it here. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, okay. So starting at uh, Galatians 5, 16, but I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. 
walking implies you actually doing something, does it not? I mean, right. I mean, I know this sounds silly, but I, I've actually had this argument with people where they think that walking by the spirit is just having faith alone. Like you don't actually do anything. You're just, uh, I, I mean, what sense does this make? No, walking means that you're actually doing something. Just like Abraham, you know, Jesus said that we need to walk in the footsteps of Abraham. Well, Abraham actually did stuff, right? He actually obeyed. Right. Hebrews 11, by faith, they did these things, right? Um, by, faith, they, oh, by faith, they obeyed God. Yeah. So <laughs> so un, under this whole context of, of uh, not being justified by the law, now he gets to this. And, and this is where you would expect to see, okay, now Paul is going to say that we don't have to obey Jesus, right? That, right. that uh, Now he's going to switch. Okay. Uh, Galatians 5, 18 through 21. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. So he's saying, if we've come into, uh, come into a relationship with Jesus, we've been filled with the Spirit, and we're being led by the Spirit, we are no longer under the law. The whole the whole what, argument he's been making law? is the Old Testament law. Yeah, the, law? the Mosaic right. law. We're not under right. the Mosaic law. This is what he said the entire way through. He hasn't just switched it to like like some sort of different type of law. He like th that's why I wanted to pound this in in people's heads so much because Paul does it. He says it just over and over and over and over again. Over and over again. Yeah. Right. So if, if we're led by the Spirit, we're no longer under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Okay. In, in case in case you're inclined to think, hey, Paul's arguing that we don't have to obey Jesus and that sin doesn't matter for our salvation anymore. Well, let's just look at this. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, so he did this obviously several times, maybe constantly, that those who do such things who uh, l let me just say walk this way right right who right. walk this way who do these things will not inherit the kingdom of god this means hell for you if you do these things right so, so yeah is, is he saying that you don't have to obey jesus's commands i mean did, didn't jesus command you know see now he now he notice he this is the first time here that he's using works in a different manner works of the flesh Mm, and, yeah. how, and how many, you know, I, I certainly don't believe all faith alone people are wor working in the flesh, but uh, seems like a lot of teachers are, unfortunately. Think about this. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies heresies think about yeah. that envy murders drunkenness revelries and the like of which i tell you beforehand just as i told you in time past that those who practice such things will not will not will not inherit the kingdom of god are you sure it doesn't it's say dealing, unless you have faith no it's it's dealing unless with you have faith alone flesh. it's showing who's in the flesh and who's in the spirit because he goes on but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against which there is no law. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's so, so clear what he's arguing for now. And, and this really just comes down to uh, part of it, at least, is just not understanding the, the new covenant. And, and I really want to get more into this, God willing, in the future, but just understanding the new covenant, how he puts the spirit in us. Where he says we're no longer under the law if, if we're being led by the spirit, if we're not doing these things. If we are doing these things, it actually proves that we are under the law and we, we right. do have condemnation. Um, but l let me just read. Uh, so Galatians 5.24, it, he goes on to say, And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. They, they've crucified it. They're, they're no longer right. walking in sensuality, idolatry, sorcery. They, they've crucified it. They didn't, they didn't partially like, like uh, they're, they're still walking in these things, but they're, but they're trying not to while just having faith alone. No, he says- that It doesn't say they're trying. It's yeah. just, it, and and that's, that's always been my mantra when I, hear, when I hear somebody say, well, I'm trying, I'm trying. I, I tell them, it's not about trying, it's about dying. Mm. If I keep trying, I'm going to sin every day. Yeah. If I die and submit to the spirit, 
Galatians 5, 16, I, shall not, I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's not about Keith trying. If Keith tries, Keith sins every day. But if I die, then I have victory. That's, That's what he's arguing for here. It's Amen. not about trying. It's about dying. It's the like exact that. gospel that Jesus Christ preached. Didn't he say that in Luke chapter 9, verse 23? Whoever desires to come after me, let him have faith alone. Is that what Jesus said? Whoever desires to come after me, just believe in me. See, people, there is times that Jesus did say, believe in me, believe in me. This is the work of God, to believe in the Son. Yeah, yeah that's part of it. But what about Luke 29, or Luke, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 9, verse 23, where he said, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Is that a work? Hmm. Do, do you need to walk that out? See? Yeah. It's well, not I mean, works of the law. It's exactly. works of the spirit. You're submitting to God. Exactly. I mean, you know, Jesus was Jesus was crucified, he was buried, and he rose again. We absolutely have to believe in that. But then he's, he he tells us to take up our own crosses. And if we right. don't do that, he says we're going to lose our life. The, the context is talking about eternal life. So we have to, he, he died on the cross for us as an example. And this example is not optional as we're going to see here in a minute. No, right. this example that he did is mandatory that we walk right. by faith in his footsteps. Right. Um, so let me just, let me just read Galatians six, seven through nine, because this, this really hammers at home for those who think that it's by faith alone. Just look at this. Paul goes on to say, to preach the exact same gospel as Jesus preached about how, no, we, we have to, we have to like, like that quote, uh, you, you probably know it by memory. You quoted it earlier, uh, John, I think it's five twenty four that those who are, uh, resurrected. What uh, was that? Yeah. John chapter five, it's right after verse, cause they love verse 24 through 25, but yeah. they don't keep reading to verse 28, 29, where he says, do not marvel at this for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Does that sound like faith alone to you? Yeah, exactly. So, so let's keep that in mind while we're reading Paul, because Paul learned from the Holy Spirit, right? Paul learned uh, from Jesus. He, he, he's, not, he's not preaching something that's opposing those words that you just quoted there from Jesus, right. that those who have done good will be resurrected to the resurrection of, of life. Right. This, this is saying essentially the same exact thing, guys, that you have to keep doing good. Right. Why? In order to be saved in the end. Same when when the resurrection you. happens so that, you don't, so that you're not told, depart from me, I never knew you. So look at this, Galatians 6, 7 through 9. Do not be deceived. Okay, so at, at the end of all this, just think He's about this. Warning you. <laughs> Paul says, listen, after okay, after all this, this is the only time in Galatians where he says, do not be deceived. So essentially, you know, this could I be, think... hey, the main takeaway that I want you to take away from <laughs> all this. Don't, don't get any of my words twisted here. Do right. not be deceived. This is what I'm I'm about to tell you that there's a lot of deception on. Okay. Think about that. Think about that, Adam. He's he's if you see, do not be deceived you better take heed to that i mean how much more it's like a big warning sign that you see on the ladder hey don't step on the top step yeah it's a warning don't be deceived exactly you know there's uh th there's studies that have been done and this happens all the time where they there's like construction or they're they're doing something on the road and they put these big flashing lights and everything right and they try to put you know sometimes even a, a couple of them but yet they still constantly have people that just barrel straight on through, you know, just blaring their music, not even caring, not paying attention. And bam, they, they either hit a worker or they 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 run into something else. But uh, this is frequently. Yeah, it, even with big. Warning. Exactly. So, guys, don't be that person. This is a big warning. Paul says, do not be deceived. That means there is going to be deception. Think about it. if there's deception in his day on this. Think about how much more deception on this there is 2,000 years down the road. So if if Paul was really saying that, hey, we don't have to worry about obeying Jesus for salvation's sake, then why would he say, listen, guys, do not be deceived. Do not get me wrong on this. And just like Peter said, that people twist Paul's words into what? In, into what? They twist his words into, into, into work salvation 
or they twist his words into what? Lawlessness. That's what they're twisting his words into that Peter warned that they were doing even then. How much more now with the influence of uh, Calvin and Martin Luther and all that. So guys, I'm, I'm telling you this right now. Do not be deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Just, just stop what you're doing. Stop, stop all the all the things running through your mind and, and stop what you've been taught and just listen to what he's saying here. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh, what does this mean? He, he just talked about this. The he works of the flesh are evident. Uh, in right. sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, these are all works of the flesh. Idolatry, sorcery, not, enmity, hey, strife. Wait a minute, Adam. It's not works of the law, though. It's works of the flesh. Exactly. See? Yeah, and he's the made, works of the flesh, he, he literally right. outlines. Enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. The things that, you know, you won't inherit the kingdom of God if you do. Right. He says... Uh, God is not mocked for whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh, these things that I just read, whoever does these things and sows into the flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. This word here, uh, I did a video on this as well. You guys can check out that I have not received any uh, refutation on this video, by the way, that, that and any reasonable refutation at all. Uh, th- this word corruption is the same word that's used to talk about hell. This means you're right. going to go to hell. And he contrasts this with heaven. That's how we also know as well, because he goes on to say, but the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Now, does that sound like heaven to you? Yeah, right. Let me ask you something. Is that a conditional statement? Yeah. Yeah. Sure is. I mean, the the one who does does this will, this will happen. Does he have to paint a picture here? I mean, it's so clear what he's saying. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. You're going to be destroyed, everlasting fire. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Whose job is it to sow to the spirit? God's or yours? Yeah, and I've heard people say that that God will do it. You just have faith alone, and then I guess you're just already sowing to the sowing to the spirit just by having faith alone. Really, and and you know, you kind of brought that up, and that's interesting um, because the Cal- see the Calvinist really is actually more logically consistent with this than the faith alone advocates. See, the Calvinist typically it's interesting. Um, uh, you know, as you know, brother, I, I'm releasing um, works. What is work salvation on my YouTube channel? Because I upload my church sermons. I'm a pastor of a church. If you don't know that, for all of you listening, and I'm releasing work salvation part one tomorrow Sunday, and uh, it'll probably be at least a three part series. We're going to go through this, and, and it may lead into this faith alone stuff too. And the the Calvinist is the most logically consistent. Now it, it's it's against the gospel. But at least, the, see, the Calvinist believes that you're regenerated first. Then God gives you the gift of repentance and the gift of faith. See, they believe anything that you do whatsoever is works. So they truly are logically, cons- they're being logically consistent. They're against all works. That God does it all for you. But see, the faith alone crowd is being illogically they're, they're not being logically consistent. It's illogical. Think about it. They, they come against us and they say, you guys are work salvationists. Well, do you believe that you have to believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe that your faith comes from you? And the That's something you got to do. They right? do agree with that. Yeah. Okay, well then by your very definition, by your very standard that you're using against us, you are a work salvationist. Yeah, I mean, Jesus said I that just, this I, is the work that, that uh, this is the work that you have yeah. to believe in him whom God sent. It's a, yeah, there you go. What, what, uh, what, uh, John six, John I can't remember. Six, I Maybe think it was, 20. let me, let me look at it. Cause I want to give that on record. That's John chapter six. I think it's 27 or 29. Um, uh, 27 through 29. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So listen to this John chapter six, verse 26. Uh, let's let's read verse 27. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has sent his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Now see, the Calvinist believes, well, see, God's giving you that. See, they're being logically consistent, but you faith alone advocates are not being logically consistent because you would argue that the faith comes from us. 
which that is true. I agree with them on that because when you say you have faith in Jesus Christ, you're saying that you have the faith of Abraham. Was the faith of Abraham something internal in Abraham or did God give him that faith? Well, we know it was from Abraham. He believed in God and God accounted it to him for righteousness. So the faith alone advocates are right about this. It comes from themselves. But is that a work? Well, then yeah. by your very standard that you're using against Adam and I and Kerrigan Skelly and all these other guys that preach the true gospel, you are a work salvationist. Yeah, exactly. By your standard. And, and, you know, we know that believing in Jesus is more than just literally believing he existed or even just believing only that he died on the cross. OK, I mean, we, we know uh, we, we know many people who, who believe that, but who are not walking with Christ. OK, and it's more than just believing those that that information. It's also believing his words. It's believing the things that he said, the things that he commanded. They, they go they go hand in hand. And listen to this. In John 12, uh, 48 and 49, listen to this. Uh, actually, 47 and 48. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, that means do what he says. Let's see what happens. I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my words has a judge. The word that I've spoken will judge him on the last day. Jesus commands in, in what he said, not just believing in, in what he did, but also believing what he said. This is what's going to stand in judgment against you. Remember, Jesus said that if you're ashamed of me and my words, then he'll be ashamed of you. Right. So so he, he, him and his words, he is the word. His Him and his words, uh, you, you can't really separate. You can't say, OK, I believe in Jesus, but but I'm not going to believe in his words. No, I mean, you, you can't separate them. It, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's very clear. Yeah. You know, another interesting thing, you know, I was going to bring up because, you know, see James, when you read James, which is another topic, but I'll address it shortly. James is speaking about different works. See, the apostle Paul is dealing with this whole controversy because he was the apostle to the Jews or the Gentiles. I'm sorry, even though he did preach to the Jews too, but he was specifically for the Gentiles. And he was dealing with this whole controversy, trying to persuade the Gentiles to come under the law and be circumcised. But see, when you read James, see, Martin Luther didn't know how to handle this yeah. because it, he clearly says that James 2.24, you see then that a man is justified, dikaieo, the same Greek word all throughout Romans 3 and 4. You see then the man is justified, dikaieo, by works and not by faith only. Or alone. That Greek word can be only or alone. So the only time you ever see faith and alone put together is the very verse that destroys your argument. Now, the works that James is addressing is something different. Now, here's what many YouTube teachers, which, by the way, many of these YouTube teachers need to stop teaching. Because James 3 once clearly says that you are going to receive a stricter judgment from God if you claim to be. Right judged. after he, he gets done talking, giving this whole thing, hey, what? we're not justified by faith alone. And then he goes on to say... Hey, right after that, be you know, don't let there be many teachers. Many of you shouldn't be teachers. Right, right after he made this whole argument that you're not justified by faith only, he literally goes on and says, "Do not desire to be teachers, for we are going to receive the stricter judgment." You YouTube teachers, you you, you need to stop. You need to stop because you're not taking these words very. I take these words seriously. Like I I live in fear of God. I truly do fear God. Now, James 2, 24, he, you know, he makes that argument that you see then that a man is justified by works, not by the, not by faith only. And see, these YouTube teachers and many pastors like to say, well, that, that justification is not salvation. He's not addressing that. Oh, really? That's interesting. Well, let's see who the false teacher is right now, shall we? Go 10 verses before that. James chapter 2, verse 14, in the same context of James chapter 2, verse 24, he literally sits there and says, my brethren, Christians, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can faith save him? Guess mm. what that Greek word is? Sozo. It's S-O-Z-O, -O, the transliterated word. Sozo. Okay, it, that is the same Greek word used in Mark chapter 16, verse 6. He who believes 
in him and is baptized will be saved. The same Greek word. The same Greek word is used in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who desires all men to be saved. That's talking about salvation. I mean, the He's evidence is salvation. just absolutely stacked see, against them. See, the works that James is addressing is works of faith not works of the mosaic law or circumcision yeah and he, he even talks about it right before that he's talking about hey if, if somebody comes to you and and they need food and they need clothing and you just say hey be blessed you know i'm, I'm gonna pray for you kind of thing then uh you know that's what he's talking about what love acts of love so into the spirit the spirit's gonna have you so uh right. into acts of love as, and as is, we're gonna that, say. is that not what jesus said in matthew chapter 25 when he said he, he literally tells you how he's going to judge. He's going to separate the sheep from the goats. And he's going to look at the ones and he's going to say, well, you fed me, you clothed me, you visited me, you gave me food, drink, all this stuff. When did we see that you needed this? Well, you did it to Lisa, me, you did it to me. And then he's going to look at the goats and he's going to say, I was hungry. I was thirsty. I was naked. I was a stranger. You didn't do this stuff for me. Off with Amen. you in the lake of fire. Amen. And, That's and you the know, same works that James is talking about, works of the spirit. Exactly. And, and uh, yeah, if, if you love me, you'll, you'll keep my commands. But these, these teachers out there, man, the evidence is just stacked against them on, on James 2 and in so many other places. But, I mean, specifically James 2, if, if they, they just so casually just, oh, oh well, uh, justified there just, just, means, uh, just means justified in sight of men. And, and they, go to, you know, they go to one little, little verse where justified is, uh, you know, can, can mean something different. And they go, oh, see, and, and they just discount it. But, I mean, guys... Right. Do you not have fear of the Lord when when they're using when James is using these these strong strong salvific words like I don't know saved uh, justified when he's using these strong words doesn't that at least just give you pause and go okay I better tread over this very carefully James seems to be I'm, I'm and, and listen even Martin Luther said that yes this seems to be he, he even agreed to his credit he actually agreed that James two preaches that yes. we need to obey in order yeah. to be saved that we need to have works right and but his in, instead of uh what most christians do today they just they just twist it and find ways around and say oh that well justified doesn't really mean justified oh save there it doesn't really mean save i mean okay you know what he did he he actually said he actually offered his doctrinal cap to anyone who could reconcile uh, romans 4 with uh james 2 and he said well, that he he, he couldn't do it and he said that he would give his doctrinal cap <laughs> And then he called James an epistle of straw, yeah, basically calling it, it was, it was like yeah. trash to him. And he tried he to put it as an appendix at the end of the Bible, along with books like, you know, Hebrews, Revelation, because he couldn't reconcile. But friends, again, this, this is very simple. In fact, why don't you reconcile Romans 2 with James 2, where, where, right. where Paul literally says this right here. He, he, li listen, in Romans 2, Paul is preaching the same thing I, in I Galatians. Actually... I actually quote that so much on the street. I know where you're going. Yeah. Uh, I'll quote it. Now, listen to this. If you believe in the Romans road to salvation, see in Romans 2 and actually Romans 1 and Romans 2, Paul's making a different argument. Then he gets into circumcision and the Mosaic law. I actually have the epistle of Romans study on my YouTube channel. We did from one to four in this, in our church here. There is very detailed, but in Romans chapter two, he says, or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance, but in accordance with your hardness and your unrepentant heart, you are treasuring up self wrath, treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. Works. And that deeds yeah. is the Greek word ergon, which is always translated as works throughout Romans 3, 4, most of the New Testament. It's ergon, E R G O N. Who will yeah. render to each one according to his works eternal life to those who patiently continue right he that's what he's arguing you know what that sounds it's a lot like what jesus it. said in 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 uh, john 5 28 and 29 okay to those who have done good to the resurrection of life what? right and and listen with, with that in mind with that in mind let's just finish up galatians 6 because yeah. paul was preaching the same thing the same thing in in, in romans 2 He's preaching here. In fact, a lot of people call Galatians a, a type of mini Romans, if you will. Right. And, and he, he was preaching the same thing. Listen to this. He goes on to say, OK, but to the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. This means salvation. In case any of you guys out there, uh, you know, you know, want to try to make this something different. 
come on, we, we know what eternal life is. Eternal right. life is salvation, right? right. You're going to reap eternal life if you continue sowing to the Spirit. And then he says, and let us not grow weary of doing good. Well, well do, doing good, what, what does that mean? Well, yes. just like, okay, doing good, sowing to the Spirit, doing acts of love. We, we know what doing good means. And just like in, in Romans 2, uh, how, how he says, you know, we, we need to continue by patience in well-doing, in good works, right? right. He's saying the same thing here. He says, but, uh, and, and let us not grow weary of doing good. We have to be doing the good in faith, in love. But right. he said, do not grow weary of doing good for in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. L listen if. to that conditional statement. If, if. wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. So, so faith alone and conditional security. Wow. This this is just this is destroyed by this in in Romans two and James James two and so many other passages uh, that we try to go through. But but listen, what, what what's the condition here? That you have to keep doing good, you have to sow to the spirit, not sow to the flesh, and and continue doing so. Why? In order that you reap is what he says. Well, reap what? Well, look at look at the very. The previous verse, reap eternal life. That's what he's talking about. He's saying, you have to keep doing this. You do it. You have to keep doing this in order that you, you, you don't reap corruption. You don't go to hell so that you can have eternal life. Now, listen, for all those of you out there who, who come against us and say that we're preaching a works-based salvation, we have a false gospel, all this stuff. Listen, just look at Galatians 6, 7 through 9 and just... Do you at least have have mercy and pity on us? How how we can read this and and come to this conclusion that hey, uh, you know we we need to keep doing good in order to reap eternal life because why? Well, because that's what Paul says. Do you, do you at least instead of just you know coming against us and just coming up with all these accusations how we're just uh, you know we're we're in the Galatian error and and all this stuff and we're works based? Do you not just pause for a second and say okay, well you know what it it, it does seem like it does seem like Paul is saying that you have to keep doing good in order to reap. And he, he just said that reap is talking about eternal life. So, hey, it sounds like he's saying that we need to keep doing good in order to reap eternal life, in order to be saved. So can you guys not at least just see this and say, okay, I, I at least get where they're coming from, especially with, with, with strong words in James, like, in, like in James 2. Uh, where he says save, where he says justify. Right. Romans 2, where, you know, Same you just read words. all that. So Same many other passages words. too. All, all, all of Jesus' words mm. where the parables were are all about what? Are all about what you do if you obey the master, if you do certain things. I mean, come on. I mean, this is, this is all throughout the Gospels. This is all throughout the Bible. Can, right. can they at least see where we're coming from on this instead of just railing accusations against us? Right. And I mean, really, it, it shows uh, we're certainly I want to say on record, we're certainly not saying that all faith alone people are like this. We don't believe that. Jesus actually tells you, well, it's the Apostle John under inspiration of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Revelation twenty two fourteen. 14. He literally tells you who's going to end up there. Blessed are those who do his commandments. Whose commandments? Jesus's. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. But outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, and whoever loves and practices a lot. So those are going to enter, those that are doing, because that's faith. Faith is doing. Exactly, man. Exactly. And, and let's, just, let's just recap for everybody, okay? So going through most of the epistle of Galatians, we can see that Paul over and over and over and over again is addressing very specific things. He, he's addressing things like Galatians, or I'm sorry, uh, circumcision in Galatians. He's addressing uh, works of the law. He even specifically mentions things like keeping certain days, uh, certain months and seasons. That's talking about the Mosaic law. So we see just over and over and over again, this is the context. Never once does does Paul switch the topic and go on to say, okay, guys, don't you understand that that if you're trying to obey Jesus' commands for salvation, you're going to be cut off and 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 don't no no don't don't worry about doing that. It's just faith alone. No, why? Because we it goes on in Galatians five and six to be actually a refutation of what these people say that that Galatians says. 
Okay, he actually goes on to say that it actually says the opposite of what most uh, teachers will say today. He says, no, no, you actually have to, to sow to the, to the spirit, not sow to the flesh, all these things, uh, sensuality, sexual morality, idolatry, sorcery, all these things, don't do this. And you have to sow to the spirit, which is what? Doing good, he says. Let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, we will reap. Reap what? He says, eternal life in the verse right before it. If we do not give up. So we have to continue doing this, these things. And again, th these, are, these are works of the spirit. These are works of faith. These are, these are works of obedience to the commands of Jesus. Uh, the commands of the spirit. These are not the... the the Old Testament law, the works of the Old Testament law, like Paul was very plainly saying here. So just know that anybody who 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 uses this Galatians to come to come against people like us who are preaching holiness and preaching righteousness for salvation's sake, then is this not apparent that they are in error? They're, they're in error. They're they're making this say the opposite. Paul says, no, don't don't be deceived. God is not mocked. You have to keep sowing to the spirit in order to inherit eternal life. And do not sow to the flesh. Do not do these things that he talked about or what? You're going to go to hell. That's what he's saying. You're going to go to hell. This is exactly what me and, me and Keith preach. This is exactly, this is exactly what we teach. Guys, no, no, don't, don't obey the, uh, don't, don't worry about the Old Testament law. It's not about keeping the Old Testament law. Now it's walking by the spirit, walking in the footsteps of Abraham, who actually, what? did stuff he actually walked right. and obeyed god walked with god walked in faith no we need to do that we need to not walk in the flesh which are these things uh being sexually immoral impure uh idolatry all these things don't do that guys or why you won't inherit the kingdom we, we simply just say the same right. exact thing that paul says or you're going to go to hell you're not going to inherit the kingdom means you're going to hell this is exactly what we preach but but if, if me and you preach this keith and oh oh we're just works-based salvationists well would you say the same thing about Paul? And, and would you say the same thing about Paul when he said that those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires? That's would you say, word. oh, oh, you're, you're, you're a heretic. And, and then he goes on to say, do not be deceived. This is what we try, to, we try to preach all the time. Listen, guys, don't be fooled by all these smooth talking preachers out there that are tickling your ears and telling you what you want to hear, using Galatians to say, oh, no, no, we, we don't have to obey uh, Jesus. These smooth talking preachers, he says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever one sows, whatever you sow, not, not right. you know, this is this talking about the things that you do, your deeds, your actions. You will also reap for the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But to the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good for in due season we'll reap if we do not give up. This is the message that me and you preach right. constantly. Sure but, but we're called we're called <clears throat> works-based salvationists and legalists and all this stuff. It's yeah, amazing. and all, all, all we can do, guys, is encourage you just... I, it, it's kind of like the salmon going upstream. You're going against the current. You're going against all the other professing Christians, guys. It's to be expected. Yeah. Think about the faith alone gospel. Is, is that not easy believism? Think about what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 13. He said, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, broad is the path that leads to destruction. There are many who go in it by it. Because narrow is the gate, difficult is the way that leads to life. There are few who find it. Think what they're preaching versus what we preach. Which one's preaching the broad path that leads to destruction? Who's preaching the narrow path that's difficult, hard to find, difficult, and few enter? You have to obey Jesus. Now, we're not saying, okay, when you come, you just start obeying Jesus. Don't worry about turning to him in faith. We don't preach that. I believe that is a work, that it would be a work salvation. If you just start doing what Jesus says, trying to do it in the flesh, and you don't really submit to him in faith, okay? That would be a work salvation. I believe that, even though the Bible doesn't say that. I, I do have to stress that. The Bible teaches against work salvation, works of the Mosaic law and the work of circumcision. But if I just would try to start obeying Jesus in the flesh instead of walking in the spirit, that could be a work salvation. Okay? Yeah. We don't preach that. You're submitting to him. You're doing this in faith, without a doubt. But the question is, do you have to have works? Works is part of your salvation. You are justified by faith. You're justified by works. And justification in and of itself is not salvation. That's a part of salvation. 
See, people are reading justification. They think that's a bygone of, of salvation. No, it's not. It's a part of your salvation. You know, you need well, sanctification. And, and Hebrews 5, 9, you, you put a great challenge out there. What a heretical statement that is. Jesus, having been perfected, became the author of eternal salvation to those who have faith alone. Hmm. No, he didn't say that. Who obey him. Yeah, and, and a lot of people come against us, and they'll they'll also say things like, uh, you know, hey, hey, you preach like a Mormon gospel or or a Catholic gospel or uh, Jehovah's Witness. You know, what what makes you different Always. than Jehovah's Witnesses and all that? And and it's like, listen, they 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 may be doing works, okay? They may be going door to door, uh, doing all these different things. They may be working hard, but they're right. they're not working hard for the commands of Jesus. They're they're not doing what Jesus commanded. They're doing what their church commands yeah. them. And, and listen, we're, we're not preaching. We're not preaching that you have to do this, this set of, of rules and regulations that, that are outside of the Bible, like the watchtower gives, uh, like right, the Catholic right. church gives, you have to do all these certain things. Uh, and, and, and then, and then you'll be saved. No, no, listen, it, it's not the same as that. We're preaching that you need to obey Jesus. It's simple. It, it's really simple. The spirit guides you. He'll, he'll guide you. He'll equip you. He'll tell you what you need to do. That's walking by the spirit. He'll, the spirit will guide you. If, if, if you're fornicating, he, he, he will say, no, 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 don't, don't do that. He's, he's going to teach you not to do that. Right. Just like we see right. in, in Titus two. But, uh, but it, it, it's not at all. What we preach is not at all like the Jehovah's witness and Mormon gospel, Absolutely because, not. because they're, they're <laughs> preaching regulations that are not in the Bible. Okay. They have to wear uh, special underwear the Mormons do. They have to wear, they, do all these things that are outside of the Bible. No, we're just, we're just saying, just like Paul said, uh, that, that, you know, he, he, he didn't preach a different doctrine than Christ. We, we have to, uh, we have to obey Jesus. And, it's, and I mean, it's really simple. Think, think about this. Think of where faith alone doctrine came from. It came from the reformers. Not one early church father ever taught that you're saved by faith alone or you're justified by faith alone. They taught what we teach, Adam. Hmm. You got their writing, writings too, at least the dictionary. I have their actual 10 volume set upstairs. They taught that you can't earn your salvation. It, you're, you're, you have been saved by grace through faith. Guess what? Ding, 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 ding. I teach that too. But they taught in order to receive the grace through your faith, you must repent of your sins and be baptized. Ding, 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 ding. That's what I teach. Yeah. Just okay. like it says in Galatians they, too, whoever, right. whoever has put on Christ um, or whoever has been baptized has put on Christ, right? He says that in Galatians. Right. right. And, and then they taught that, you know, you become a branch on the vine and you must obey Jesus Christ, continually abiding in him obediently to the end. That's exactly what we teach. Where did faith alone come in? By Martin Luther. Who was Martin Luther? An Augustinian monk. And just read about this man. He was wicked. He was demonic. He was of his father, the devil. I hope he repented before he died. There's no record that he did. But he was demonic. He was of his father, the devil. That's the truth. And John Calvin yeah. wasn't any better. These people were wicked, murderous, torturous beasts of the Reformation. All you have to do is a basic Google search of what they advocated for. And, and, and that's huge. I mean, think about that, guys. But before you just accept this doctrine, accept what you've been told. OK, because most most churches out there are preaching this today. So before you just accept this, just just let it be known that the, the early church fathers did not believe this. The early church fathers believed just like you were saying, they did not believe in things like eternal security. Uh, they did not believe in faith alone. You just read through some of their works. And yeah, you, you, you can pull some of their stuff out of context, just like sure you can, just like you can do with pull. the Bible. People pull right. stuff out of context. But if you actually go on to read, there was actually one quote that somebody came came against me and said, uh, I forget who it was. It might have been Irenaeus or maybe Clement. Uh, but he said, like, look, look, he, he believes we're saved by faith. And well, they were absolutely. like, yeah. And but But then if they would have just kept reading, I actually went to that quote and it was right. like maybe four sentences later. He goes on right. to say that, hey, hey, we, we need to obey Jesus and and we need to continue in works. I, I can't remember the exact quote, but he but, it just destroyed that. And I gave it to him. He didn't have any response because that's what they do. They just they quote they little snippets and they do the same thing with the Bible. But you if you just read keep, all, you know, just keep reading. They, they go on to say, yes, uh, you know, exactly what you're saying. And just think about it. If if these doctrines didn't come around until the 1500s, that should just make you just 
take a step back for a second and just go, okay, maybe, just maybe I have something wrong here. If, if it wasn't found in church history until the 1500s, just maybe I, I might be deceived. Just like Paul said, do not be deceived. God is not mocked wow. for whatever one sows, that will he also reap. Have you been deceived into thinking that, that you can sow to the flesh and somehow still inherit the kingdom? That, that's the question. Have, have you let some doctrine or some man, whether it's Martin Luther, Calvin, your pastor, anybody else, have you not taken heed to Paul's words here and let somebody deceive you on this? Um, um, yeah. There, there Is there anything are, else you'd like to add? I mean, there are teachers out there. I mean, I, you know, like I said, I'm a pastor of a church. I upload my sermons. Um, I certainly don't have the answer to everything. I'm not God, neither do you, neither does Kerrigan Skelly. But I recommend Kerrigan Skelly. He has a you know, Kerrigan Skelly, you can find him on YouTube, uh, refuting Calvinism. He has a YouTube channel. It's excellent. Yeah. Uh, your channel, obviously, uh, my channel, why city preachers, I upload my sermons. There are other, uh, herb with, uh, what evangelical disaster. He's Great got a good channel. disaster. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, I mean, and I'm subscribed to him. So there are channels you can find guys that are preaching the truth. Okay. We're just fallible men. Just guys, what I'm asking you for, don't blindly accept what me and Adam are saying. You see this right here? Just pick it up, read it, read it through the eyes of the first century people who wrote it, read it in its context. When you read through Romans, don't just read a chapter, at least read probably halfway through at least one through chapter four before you stop, because Paul makes the very long winded arguments about things. And remember the apostle Peter said that people are going to twist his words. That some of his things are hard to understand and they are. And untaught and unstable people twist to their own destructions. Mm. Guys, we, we did a run by right through Galatians real quick. You've seen it. Hopefully it helps you guys out. I, like I said, I, you know, part one of my work salvation, what is work salvation is releasing tomorrow. Um, please check it out. I, I, we go through Acts 15 and Romans one through four. Yeah. And this week will be several other epistles. And then we're going to go through Galatians the following week. And then I, that may get in. That may get into another faith alone thing. I'm trying to seek God of how he wants me to put this all together, but this is very needed. And, yeah. And another and I, thing, uh, another thing I'd like to add is, is let, let the Holy spirit teach you. Don't amen. let the, the doctrines of the reformers teach you or what maybe what you've learned in seminary or what you've learned uh, from your pastor. The, the Holy spirit is our guide. The Holy spirit is, is called the spirit of truth. So we need to seek him. We need to just forget everything. This is how I had to approach the Bible. Just forget everything I was taught and just get alone with the Bible and the Holy Spirit and have him teach me. Uh, it, it says that he wants to be our teacher. We, we have one teacher, the Christ, right? So so just let the Holy Spirit guide you. Don't, don't add any more to this. Don't take it away. But uh, for those of you out there that need fellowship, I, I just want to plug your channel and say uh, you, you have really good fellowship videos where you go live and you you have people yeah. that can ask questions come on there because i know a lot of people feel feel lonely uh you know come to my channel maybe they don't have anybody in their immediate area maybe they live right. in a different country uh where there's nobody around them who, who's a christian so this would be a great place for for you guys to go and fellowship uh you can go in there ask questions and and it's really just just a, a comfortable environment where you just you know kind of kind of just go by the spirit or just talk about whatever people are coming on and wanting to talk about. So, yeah, so I, I encourage to, you guys to go check that out. Yeah, I'll have another one this Saturday. Typically, we have it at Saturdays, uh, typically 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, and people just come in there and they can ask whatever they want. Um, if I don't awesome. know the answer, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm going to tell you that's something I got to check out. I'm not sure. I, you know, awesome. I live in fear of God. I'm not going to tell you something I don't know. So Yeah, and, and, and um, that's huge. The fear right. of God, guys, just read Galatians 5 and 6 with the fear of God and, and just and just take approach it approach it very fearfully with, with fear and trembling don't don't just breeze through it like oh oh yeah you, you know I, I basically know what he's saying and then just kind of breeze through it no take it one step at a time and approach approach it in fear this is this is salvation we're talking about okay if, if you get this wrong this means hellfire for you if, if, if you don't if you're living in these things that that paul says do not be deceived uh about and and you're being deceived by it and walking in the flesh then then, then you're going to hell. So this is, this we got to take this reverently. We got to take this, uh, you know, just just in fear. So, um, 
But yeah, check out uh, Keith's videos he's got coming out on Galatians and about work salvation. I'm excited to see those. Uh, thank you so much for coming on, and I hope this was a benefit to everybody. Is there anything that you'd like to, anything you'd like to say? I mean, no, I think we've pretty much wrapped it up, guys. Just read the New Testament and, and try to just read it in a blind slate and, and let the Holy Spirit guide you. You know, don't don't just blindly accept what we're saying or what anybody else says. Just read it in the flow of a letter. God will show you the truth. And your heart every day should be, Lord, if I'm wrong, please show me I'm wrong. I pray that. Yeah. Yeah. I pray that. I, I'm don't I'm a fallible man. It's not like I know everything. Our hearts should be, am I am I in error about these things? Show me, Lord. And he'll Amen. guide you. He'll guide you. Amen. So Absolutely, brother. I love being here. You know, I love what you're doing. I mean, I put you on the front of my YouTube channel. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brother. I, thank you for the opportunity of joining. Hey, it was an honor having you and uh, God bless you. God bless you, brother. Thanks.